welcome to this uh, introduction of uh, GIS course. In this course, we will have uh, 20 lectures and we will be discussing starting from basically what is GIS and we will go through the definition of GIS, different components and then later on uh, all integrations and analysis part of GIS which is the main important part. As, a, as you can see that on screen uh, that the GIS is made from three terms, one is geographic, another one is information and third one is systems. I would like to spend few minutes on the word term which is geographic. Uh, geographic uh, basically does not mean uh, say geography, but geographic means uh, it's a location specific data and uh, any object on the earth uh, can be defined or can be associated uh, with geographic coordinates which we know as latitude, longitude. As we know that the entire earth is having, we can have imaginary grid of latitude, longitude and therefore each object on the surface of the earth can be assigned these coordinates. And the, the advantage with the geographic uh, uh, system is that uh, uh, we can uh, not only assign the coordinates, but we can handle very well all kinds of maps and all kinds of data which is associated with geographic coordinates and also a, another term is used for geographic is a spatial. Uh, most of us are aware about the coordinate system which is called geometric coordinate system and we have studied uh, coordinate geometry as well. What happens in coordinate geometry that generally you are having 0, 0 here and then you are having say 100 here and 100 here. But once uh, if I want to do something, if uh, there is a line which I want to which is which is going through something like this and if I want to measure the length of this line, then some part of this line will go in the negative coordinate system and later on it will be very difficult to calculate even the length or we have to take care, lot of take care about the length of the line. Same would also happen in case of area. But if we handle such data like point, line or polygons in ge geographic coordinate systems, then this handling becomes much easier and therefore uh, this system has been uh, come into picture and little bit we will spend some time on the history of uh, GIS. Uh, this, uh, this was the term which was given uh, by a person whose name is Roger Tomlinson who is also known as nowadays as father of GIS. He is a, a computer uh, scientist because he is still alive and uh, he used to work in the uh, Canadian Centre uh, which was uh, looking after the uh, municipal cooperation of Ottawa. And they had lot of uh, networks of say gas pipeline or telephone lines, power lines and road network. So whenever somebody used to go to dig a uh, say gas line, then the same time he might damage the telephone line or electricity line. So the task was given by the Ottawa Municipal Corporation to this uh, computer engineer that can you develop a computer system by which uh, when a person is assigned such repair work, he should know that at what time, uh, at what depth, at what location he will encounter another network. And for that then he started working on this uh, kind of concept and he developed uh, this uh, geographic information system. There are different terms nowadays are there like uh, many people would like to call as a uh, geoinformatics which involves not only GIS but also remote sensing, GPS and uh, overall computer technology. Some people call as a spatial information system but uh, all will converge on one concept. The basic is that handling the data in geographic domain rather than in geometric domains. That is the main difference here. Uh, as we know that uh, there earlier there are uh, still exist some CAD CAM systems in which uh, a uh, geometric coordinate system is used, not geographic coordinate system and therefore there are some difficulties people encounter, especially when I want to 
if I am having a map of this uh, portion, when I want to add another map of uh, adjacent portion, I might, might have difficulty in a geometric coordinate system. But in geographic coordinate system, such difficulties will not arise. That is the advantage, one of the advantages. I, uh, because the main purpose of GIS is not to store the data or keep the data, but provide analysis and finally, as most of the systems, they provide the platform to uh, model the data or to use these uh, systems to predict something which has not happened yet on the ground. So, here I am showing uh, the same water set in, uh, uh, in two uh, up and down. And uh, this water set, as you can see, the boundary is here, say, showing in a grid form. And uh, some uh, this water threshold, or in simple terms, we can say the uh, soil moisture here. So, what, what we are seeing that there are different sets here, and one this uh, dashed bracket or an area is marked here. And the, uh, the, in the same water set, uh, the same uh, the, uh, at another location, having the same area is also marked. What it is basically indicating that if uh, in this particular water set, if uh, this part uh, the, uh, the forest of this part of the water set is removed, then this is going to the scenario of soil moisture conditions. And if same area, but at different location within the same water set, if the forest cover is removed, this is going to be the change in the soil moisture condition. As you can see that here, this is bringing all together a, a new scenario, which is not there in, in this case. So, what basically GIS is providing us to predict something, which has not really happened on the ground. That means, you can simulate lot of real things, real scenarios, real problems, which are related with nature or in, uh, complex processes of nature within the computer before anything really happens on the ground. That is why it has become a very powerful tool for modeling and also for prediction. So, uh, as I have uh, mentioned earlier, that the geographic means it relates to the places on the earth's surface and in geographic coordinate system, not in geometric coordinate system. And if then we start answering questions that where something is, because once a location is attached to a object, then we can answer where it is. Like nowadays, we know that uh, uh, with mobiles and uh, with the coordinate systems, we, we can find out or very soon we would be able to track each and every mobile through the GPS, because GPS provides the information, which is the location, which is latitude longitude of that particular mobile. So, similarly here that in GIS, we get the information or answer of a question that where is something and also another question that what it is giving location. So, once we, we have attached an information, let me give you one uh, very uh, interesting example. Like uh, there are uh, every year there are JE examination is conducted, but we keep all this data in a database. We do not keep this data in a geographic database. Suppose tomorrow we start keeping the coordinates of each candidate who is appearing for JE in a geographic coordinate system or in a GIS platform, what would happen? Once the student are selected, then we would, when we will plot this, uh, you know, appeared a student versus selected student, we should get a very interesting plots or distribution of the data. And we, I am sure we will also find some clusters. So, clusters will raise the question, why it is happening? Why not throughout this distribution of selected candidates throughout India is same? Why it is happening in a cluster form? Might be because of good coaching, might be the intelligent level of people are higher or is it related with the, uh, you know, economic things or is it related with the schooling? All kinds of questions will come and then we will be able to uh, answer if we get few more data like economic data set or uh, maybe schooling data set, climate data set. If we start adding in that uh, geographic system or GIS system, we should be able to answer that why there are clusters. So, similarly, lot of such phenomena can be uh, understood very nicely once we assign the location to certain objects. 
So that is why geographic word is very, very important. The other two terms which are used, which most of us are familiar is about information and systems. That information and systems which way, because uh, the data is converted into information through computers and which allows us, uh, which a GIS platform allows us to manipulate, summarize, also we can raise the questions to the system. We can edit, we can visualize, visualization is very, very important thing. The, in the previous slide when I have showed the water set that is also visualization and visualization before really anything happens. And uh, with the, we work on the information or data which is stored in the computer database. So, it is a kind of integrated system which is having not only the geographic data, but in a database system. So, all the qualities of database systems, DBS, DBMS systems are there and all your CAD systems uh, capabilities are also there. So, it is a kind of integrated system. Slowly, slowly we will learn how it is. Uh, progress when we progress is in this course. So, let us have a look on the def, uh, definition of a GIS. This is a most modern definition of GIS in different books, literatures or internet, you may find little varied definition. But uh, if we hear each and every word is very, very important and therefore, I will go one by one through all these terms or words which are mentioned in this definition that GIS is a computer based information system. That means that can we have analog GIS system? No, very, very difficult because earlier when we did not have uh, good computers, there were people who, who, ha who, who were de de having some maps or data in a transparent sheet or tracing papers. It was very difficult. So, manual system of GIS is not really possible and that is not really truly a GIS which present day which we are having. So, computer based, it has to be computer based and it is designed to accept large volumes of spatial data. Spatial or geographic data, I have already explained to you that the data which is location specific data and uh, which is uh, designed to accept large volumes, that means uh, large data sets can come into our GIS database and then we can analyze in a very easily manner and throughout this course, we will learn how the analysis can also be found. And this data can come from a variety of sources. So, this data are derived from variety of sources. Maybe the data, maybe the remote sensing data coming from satellites and uh, remote sensing, maybe data from field, maybe data coming from internet sources or various uh, instruments, the data can directly come into GIS given that it fits in the uh, format which is required in a GIS database. Then the other purpose of GIS is to efficiently store. If data is not stored properly in an organized fashion, in a formatted fashion, then the retrieval of the data really becomes very, very difficult. For example, if a, a in a say in a office there are a room or a store which is having hundreds of files, we know that the information is there or data is there. But when I ask a specific data or information from that office, then the answer may come, sir, the data is inside the room or inside in this store room, but we do not know in which file the data is. That means it is not efficiently stored. If I am able, whenever I ask a question or data or information from that particular office and if they are able to retrieve very efficiently that information to me, then we call as efficient. So, in GIS, we can have efficient uh, storage. Once we are having efficient storage, that allows us to efficient retrieval and of course, analyze which is the heart of GIS. The main purpose of GIS is the, in, in these two terms, analyze and model. Model I have given one example of ultimate aim of the model is to predict something which has not really happened on the ground. We will also see a demo in which a, a, through a GIS software, I will show that how on a terrain, a reservoir can be simulated before really it happens and we can calculate all, uh, all required parameters which are required for the construction or even planning phases, pre feasibility stage. So, the model can be done and various then uh, once you are having everything on computer, then you can play with that or you can change the scenario, you can change the constraints and conditions and can bring a very good uh, uh, you know options 
or uh, scenarios which you can present to the decision maker. So, ultimate aim of uh, GIS is also is a decision support system. So, it will provide different scenarios through the analysis, through the modeling which you can present to the decision makers and then they can make the appropriate decision. And finally, the main uh, other purpose of GIS to display or bring output. It is not just keep the everything on the computer. No, you can uh, create output in form of maps, you can create output in form of models, even 3D models and so on so forth or even simulations, animations. So, all these things can be done at the end of this uh, you know development stage of GIS according to user defined specifications. This is another very, very important thing, not as per the GIS expert, but as per the persons who is going to use the GIS data or output. So, decision makers will ask something. This is very interesting related with GIS is more you deliver through GIS, more you are asked to deliver. And this thing has really compelled uh, us to develop GIS more and more. And this is how the Roger uh, Tomlinson developed because he was asked to do something using computers. Once he developed the GIS, then he was asked few more things to do in the and slowly, slowly this uh, GIS has been developed. So, let us go through one quickly through this definition is the geographic uh, GIS is a geographic information system uh, which is a computer based information system designed to accept large volumes of spatial data and uh, uh, derived from variety of sources and to efficiently store, retrieve, analyze, model and display uh, these data according to user defined specification. So, users are very, very important. Later on in the next lecture, we will be seeing the different components of GIS where you will see the user or people are very, very important. So, not only computer software, but the users are equally important in a GIS system. Now, uh, I have been using these uh, these two terms, generally many people uses these two terms interchangeably, which is not really accurate. Data is something, information is something and then third, which GIS plays major important role, convert all this into knowledge. So far we know that by data itself means if, if there is a register or a file which is having just data, it does not have any meaning. Say it is having a rainfall data. It does not have meaning unless it is analyzed and once you do the analysis, perform analysis on GIS platform, then it becomes information. So, using simple computers, even without using GIS, you can convert data into information. So, data itself generally differs from information and the data of little use as I have already mentioned that if it is there in the file or in excel sheet or in a table or in a register, it does not have any meaning unless it has been analyzed and converted, transformed into information. The, the best thing which GIS does is even convert this information into knowledge and I will give you some examples also. So, information is an answer to the question based on the raw data, whereas GIS can transform data into information. So, how it happens very simply uh, through a small uh, fellow chart is the data once you involve the computers, you can convert data into information. But when this information goes through the GIS, then it becomes the knowledge. We have seen one uh, water set scenario where the forest was not yet cut, but we knew that what would happen to soil moisture condition and that is the knowledge. So, if, uh, if GIS would not have been there, then such scenarios cannot be prepared or presented and that is the advantage having GIS. The GIS not only converts data into information because it is a computer base. So, it can convert data into information, but information too can be converted through modeling, through analysis in GIS into knowledge which is very, very important. And that is the basically what I would say the ultimate purpose of GIS is to convert data into information and then finally to the knowledge and knowledge which can really help in all kinds of scenarios which we will see little later. Now, I have also mentioned two other technologies, one is GPS, another one is remote sensing and GIS we are, we are already discussing here. 
the, there are three common things with these three technologies, very, very important and that is why uh, because of this co uh, these commonalities among these three technologies, they, the integration of these technologies have become very much possible and therefore, new, new products, new, new applications are coming through this, which we will see some examples. So, GIS, GPS and remote sensing, which is satellite based remote sensing I am talking, are generic, I will explain, special and digital technologies. As a special or geographic technology, which we have already said that because GIS handles the data in geographic domain, GPS provides the geographic coordinates on a, any part of the globe, any time and then remote sensing data is also represented in can be represented in a spatial domain or in geographic domain. Now, uh, now about the word generic, generic means here that it can be applied for various things like computers, you know, computers are being used for accounting, computers are being used for creating videos, computers are being used to modify. Uh, you know audios all kinds for all kinds of purposes nowadays people are employing computers. So, computer technology is a generic technology. So, our these three technologies which are like GIS, GPS and remote sensing are generic, spatial and digital technology. Since these are digital technologies therefore, the integration of these three technologies with computer technology has become very much possible and as we are seeing nowadays on your mobiles, smart mobiles all kinds of things are coming and one of the two best products which uh, people unknowingly which, which are not expert of GIS, they do not know what is basically GIS may not be knowing, but they are using and these very popular products which I can name, one is Google map which on, on your mobile anywhere you go for navigations, for car navigations, location identification, for all kinds of things you are using Google maps. So, Google map and Google earth are the custom design very special products which uses all these three technologies in integrated fashion and this is how uh, the growth of uh, GIS. And, uh, and on these technologies is reaching to the common man without even they do not they know they do not know they are not aware that what kind of integration of technologies which they are using even on their mobiles. But these technologies are being reaching are we are reaching to the very common man through such uh, technologies like uh, smart mobiles and other things. Now, as I have mentioned that uh, even before Roger Tomlinson, the concept of GIS in analog form was already existing, but not the present GIS and had lot of limitation. Nonetheless, there is one example of 1854 in London, there were cholera ep epidemic and uh, what people analyzed that there were some uh, uh, water supplying tube wells and there were deaths due to the cholera. And when this plotted, when this deaths were plotted using geographic coordinates on a road map and having this location of uh, water supplying tube wells, they found that the not all wells water is polluted or having problems which is causing cholera. Only few wells, especially the well which is shown in this map in the center was the most responsible well which has the water which was causing cholera. So, once as I gave the example of JE selection, similarly lot of such problems can we resolve or can we these uh, challenges or problems can be understood once we start plotting the data using geographic coordinates and as in this example also. So, once the data is plotted immediately one can raise the question that why the deaths are uh, due to cholera are surrounding this area, why not in other parts an obvious answer that might be because of. So, one, one layer is not sufficient as you are seeing here that the three layers of information, three themes are there, one is your street map, another one deaths due to the cholera and third is the tube bell locations. In GIS, you can have several such layers. This is analog system example, but in digital systems, you can have variety of data variety of spatial data into GIS system, variety of layers of all kinds which we will uh, learn in this course slowly. Also it allows us to store the data in tabular form, 
which that means it, it is a, this spatial information is attached with attribute data, which we also call as non-spatial data. As I have said that the GIS is an integrated technology. So, you are having digital cartography and CAD CAM tools are all available in GIS plus your database management systems. So, all these technologies have been integrated into GIS plus few more things and the basic thing is handling of all this in geographic coordinate system. So, in that way analog GIS systems are not new, but only this uh, digital uh, GIS systems developed in somewhere in 1962-63 when uh, Roger Tomlinson started developing GIS. As I have mentioned that uh, a, a data in GIS is kept in different themes or we call in simple terms and layers. A, a real world example is given here that this is real world which is having you know natural features like streams, hills and forest and uh, some man made features like buildings and roads and other things are there three dimensional information is also shown here. What we can do in GIS that we can keep different informations in different layers. Like here the land uses, how the land is being used can be kept in one layer which when we can call as land use layer. Then how the topography is changing that we can store in a elevation or in a raster layer which we call as a digital elevation model in a elevation layer. Then how these uh, land records, who owns which part of the land, revenue records can be stored in a polygon layer which is here it is mentioned parcels. So, it is a polygon layer and uh, then you are having a road network or a street network which you which is nothing but the line network which you can have in another theme which is a street network and then you are having locations maybe uh, resident, customers, patients all kinds of things as a point data you are storing. So, all variety of data as you can see that uh, there are point data, there is line data, there is a polygon data and then these two data sets are different which are a continuous data which we call as raster data. So, this is raster data, this is vector data. So, vector all three types of vector data is there. Here we have not added satellite image, you can bring one more raster as a satellite image that will go as a raster data. So, what we see here that the real world can be divided into several layers. Now, anytime we want to use any of layer or combination of these layers into a GIS system, it is very easy to use. And that is why this, this initially the, at the data storage level, we go for this disintegrated manner. We store data in a different layers, different themes and later on whichever the theme is required for my analysis I, I will use. Like in case of that cholera epidemic, three layers were used, the groundwater level data, street level data and then deaths due to the cholera. So, only three layers were used de depending on the problem or solutions which you are looking, you might use different layers. So, basically as you can say that in GIS these layers are the data is organized into different themes or layers having uh, two or three different types of data models. One is vector, raster and one more data model which we will be discussing in later uh, lectures is the TIN which is triangulated irregular network. Now, as I have said that uh, GIS ultimate aim is to support decision making. And this is how done at strategic level. So, again the same scenario here that a, a real world is a segmented into different layers and data is collected. Then a, you create through the modeling analysis, you create the different scenarios and then decisions are taken. Another very important thing is that the, these arrows are two directional and that clearly indicates that at the decision level, it may be decided more data is required or the answers which at decision level people we are looking are not getting then we have to come back and that is why go back to the real world collect few more data maybe we have to collect the subsurface data like groundwater data or maybe the soil type data or maybe lithology or may if we are looking for groundwater exploration then we have to go for uh, subsurface. So, we will come back if we, if at this level the answers are not coming, we go back to the real world, 
collect few more data layers and then develop the scenario again and when uh, we are able to supply the data to the decision makers or the scenarios to the decision maker. A GIS expert himself can be also decision maker. That is, does not mean that the GIS expert cannot be decision maker. But many times there are people those who are who do not know how to handle GIS. They do not know the concepts of GIS. But these are the people who keep raising questions about can you do this thing, can it be done through the GIS and so on and so forth. So, therefore, this is a two directional thing both directions it works. So, it is a simplified version of the real world and the processes which are involved here. GIS is an integration machine as indicated earlier. So, you are having data from coming from variety of sources that data you organize in a special domain and so on and so forth and finally, you start creating applications output in maybe form of maps, maybe in form of reports or maybe some queries ad hoc questions you raise to the there is a system you raise a question that I want to like in Google map you, you, uh, you indicate to Google map this is my origin this is my destination and then you also indicate my mode of travel. So, if you are traveling by road it might provide different scenarios. And uh, therefore, the queries as per the user defined specification. So, user has defined uh, has already defined destination origin and the mode of transport and then as per the your query um, uh, your answers are coming through map as well as a report saying that this is the distance this much time it would take likewise. So, let, I am coming to the end of this particular uh, small lecture is the GIS handles spatial information, information referenced by its location in space that too in geographic coordinate system. GIS makes connections between activities based on spatial proximity, a spatial word is very very important and this is spelling is correct, this is not spatial, but spatial and the GIS who, who can use GIS. Uh, in government, industry, academics, even private people can use GIS and uh, what basically uh, the questions or which areas where GIS can be used like in transportation system I have given the example of uh, navigation in hydrology, groundwater hydrology, in geology, in demographies, crime, health, in demographies like census department of government of India has started using extensively the GIS. Similarly, railway, Indian railways have started using GIS extensively. So, not only the government department, private departments are also using even the police in some in big cities, police have also started using GIS and in private you know many taxi operators which are having hundreds of taxis in their fleet, they too are using not only the mobile technology, but GIS technology in integration. So, the operator of those taxi fleets exactly know where is a taxi lying ideal. And once that is taxi is located a customer calls the location of that customer is also plotted on the map and if the taxi whichever is nearer to that customer immediately get the message and that it reaches to the customer. That is the advantage of having information in geographic coordinate system and this is what the GIS basically provides. There are different stages in a GIS project in very brief, uh, one has to first define the problem, the project then get software and appropriate get software and hardware. There are hundreds of GIS softwares uh, starting from free public domain freely downloadable to commercial software. Very expensive softwares are also there, but very powerful. Then gather and clean data, the data and has to be very reliable, very clean, then only good decisions can be made and perform the analysis, analysis is the key part of GIS including your modeling if it is required and then finally, interpret and present the results in form of map, tables, reports etcetera. And this brings to the end of this uh, introductory lecture on introduction to GIS. In next uh, lecture, we will be seeing uh, different components of GIS in detail. Thank you.